Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to match a MIDI performance to a tempo or a click in Reaper. Now, the purpose of this video is let's say you have a part, whether it be a drum part or a piano part, you're not sure what the tempo is going to be. And instead of figuring it out by playing around with a click track, we can just record it and figure it out later. So let me show you how to do that. I've already created a drum track with a drum instrument on it. And down over here is my USB MIDI keyboard. This is not a part of Reaper. It'll just show you what I'm playing. So now we're going to record a drum part I wrote, but I'm not going to play it to a click. So we'll go up here to the metronome and turn it off. Then we'll go into record and record our part. Play it on the MIDI keyboard. Hit stop. Now if you notice, at the end of the performance, I played an extra beat starting the next bar. This is helpful to create an end to the performance and make it easier to find the tempo. Right there. So the first thing we'll do is we'll grab the item and put it at the beginning of the project. Then we'll open up the item by double-clicking it. Let's select all of the notes. Then cut them, type W, to go to the beginning of the item and paste it. So now, our performance starts at bar one. Now if we change the project tempo, it's gonna change the tempo of our performance. And we don't wanna do that. So let's right click the item, go to item properties, and change the item time base to be time. Then we'll go down here to Properties and choose the option Ignore Project Tempo. So now, if we change the project tempo to anything, let's make it 300, it doesn't change the performance. It's still exactly the same. So now, we need to define how long the performance was. So let's hold down shift and double click the item. And that's going to create a time selection based on the length of our item. Then we'll change the end of the time selection by dragging it and putting it right before that last hit. Right about there. So that's going to define the end of our section. So now, we can just define that section and create a tempo based on it, based on the time selection we created. Go up here to the ruler and right click and choose set project tempo from time selection. Now we don't want to choose the detect tempo options here or here. We just want to choose the new time signature and new tempo option. Choose this, set the time signature which was 4-4, four, four, and how many bars we played. I think we played four. Then down over here, we're going to see the tempo we played, about 81 beats per minute. So it's going to change the project tempo to this. Hit OK. You see the tempo changes down here. Now if we play our project, it should be in time with that tempo. If we turn on the click or metronome, it's pretty close. Now we didn't quantize the performance. We could still do that by double clicking the item and choosing it here. 
It just defined the tempo we played. In this case, about 81 beats per minute. Now at this point, if we still want to change our tempo, it's a good idea to glue this item. Just right click it and choose glue items. That creates a new item that can be time stretched more easily. So let's say we want to change it to be exactly 81. Now our performance changes to that tempo. And we can slow it down to 70. But it stays with the click or metronome at least as well as we played. We'll make it faster at 90. But it's a great way of figuring out the tempo we played based on the performance we play. Let's try the same thing with a melody, like a piano. Again, I've already set up a track with a piano instrument on it. So we could play it. So let's try the same thing with this. We'll play the keyboard down here, turn off the metronome, and record our performance. Again, we'll stop it. Notice again, I played an extra note at the end to define the end of a section. So we can use that again. We'll grab the item and move it to the beginning, double click it, select all the notes, cut them, hit W to go to the beginning, and paste it, close it. Now it's all at bar one. Now we'll right click and go to item properties, change the item time base to be time, ignore the project tempo, shift double click to create a time selection, which readjust the ending of the time selection. So it stops on the extra note or at the end. Right click up here, set project tempo from time selection. Again, it's 4 4, and I believe it's four bars, with the tempo about 74 beats per minute. So now we could turn on the metronome, and it should be in time with our performance, at least as tight as I played. Perfect. And again, we didn't quantize the notes. We could double click the item and quantize them right here if we want. It just found the basic tempo we played. And again, if we want to change the tempo of our project, just glue this item right down here. Now we can change the tempo in the MIDI data and our performance goes with it. Set it exactly to 74. We'll make it slower. Or faster. Again, it's a great way of just playing our performance without having to figure out the tempo in advance. We can always figure it out later. So that's pretty much it. That's how to match a MIDI performance to a tempo or a click in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.
Bye.